of my favourite things about this tractor is the noisy engine. Welcome to another episode of Jim's Farming. Um, so finally made a start on getting our cereal crops in. We've had an awful lot of rain, but we've now got a pretty good weather window, dry weather for about 10 days. Um, and I am out with the plow on a little four furrow as well, I think it's a DP8 reversible plow on our little 6230, which seems to do the majority of the work here. Got the dog, keep, keep me company. She's uh, getting pretty wound up. There's been a seagull uh, pinching worms, so uh, yeah, she's got a good eye on him. So the plan is um, getting this ploughed over. Going to plough the middle on the three, three headlands um, and just leave it to dry a little bit on top. So the reason we're ploughing, the ground has got very wet. So on top it's a little bit slippery and the idea of ploughing we're hoping to bring up a little bit of dry soil from down in. But actually it's quite you know, a good days, bit of wind, bit of sun, it should should dry up nicely on top, but it's actually surprisingly wet. Gone from having very, very hard ground to pretty pretty saturated. So um, yeah, just that's just one of those things what we have to deal with with you know agriculture. Um, so yeah I don't proclaim to be a particularly good plowman. Um, I think I've got the play somewhere near set up level. Doesn't seem to be doing too bad a job. Um, getting most of the stubble buried, occasionally a little bit sort of sits on top, but uh, I think that just sort of gets touched up on the uh, on the mold boards or the skimmers, which are the kind of little play bits there. Just rang. So yeah, I wouldn't profess to be particularly good at ploughing. Uh, it is a bit of a mysterious art doing it really, really tidily. But uh, I don't think we're doing too bad a job here. And by the time I've been over with the power harrow, the combination drill, um, it should be nice and level. So yeah, we've got winter oats variety called Muscani uh, going into this field about 10 or 11 acres um, and yeah so this I haven't used the plow I think I pulled it out last year to pull a bit of soil in from around the outside of, of the ground where there were potatoes and then it just got parked up and left so we kind of mintil cultivated everything else um, but yeah, unfortunately, we've had to bring it out this time. So in the last video, I put a bit of hard facing on the plow points, which, um, just to keep them going a bit longer. And uh, yeah, seem to be taking the, certainly this little bit I've done here, it's cleaned the rust off the mold boards, that's for sure. So I did come down here just really before it rained and uh, went around the tram lines with our subsoiler and then literally got home and it started chucking it down um, but uh, yeah it's, uh, doesn't seem to be doing too bad a job the trouble is with this it's I think the furrows are about 14 inches, so working at 
you know, 56 inches, which I think is probably like a meter and a half. So it's pretty slow going. Um, in comparison to our three meter cultivator that we used last year, Dalbo cultivator. Yeah, but, but there we go. It's it's another tool in the, in our armory of cultivation equipment, and means we uh, we can get on. I mean, ideally, I don't really like plowing. Um, there's a lot of metal to wear out on the plow. Um, it's uh, it's just a bit slow, but needs must. So I did go down and put a little mark in with my rear furrow before I started, so just to give myself a mark where to drop the plow in and out. So I've just done that just outside where the last year's tram lines were. Yeah, you can kind of see behind now, it's running over some tram lines and it's, the water's soaked down through and it's, um, soil's not falling apart quite so well. Now, now we're into the untouched ground, it's just breaking up nicely, but the furrows are kind of just rolling over where that subsoil ground is and it's, um, yeah, it's a bit putty-like. Okay, this is the uh, rusty old plough. Got a uh, hydraulic front furrow. It's pretty handy, but um, that's about it. As the uh, bells and whistles go, it's fixed width. You can see here where I put the hard facing on. And that's just starting to wear away a bit. But I think it probably was a useful exercise. Uh, these here are the landslides. See they're starting to get a bit more. I've flipped them over I think. And, um, sort the top of the bottom one I think. So that end goes to that end. So it gets reversed but I think that was two years ago. I'll need some new ones in the future. dog <laughs> so coming up too bad it's a little bit sort of livery here but there's a tram line here and the water's soaked in and it's pretty soft but you can see there uh, that's what I've been through with the subsoil and the tram line this is the nasty oh that is horrible uh, that's where the water's really soaked down through where the flat lift went. But actually here, once we get off that, it's not too bad at all. It's a um, bit of drying time and uh, it won't be too bad. Dog's having a mad minute. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter? tree field because that tree up there is partly well, I think it's a field maple but there is also a holly tree in there as well uh, yeah we've got a ditch we put in here a few years ago there's actually a ditch the other side of the hedge but um, it does down through this bottom here we got that field, two fields across there, this one, the next one, down through here it all lies very wet and same through there so it's really is it's all been drained uh, and yeah had a ditch put in there just 
just to try and get rid of it a bit better. But yeah, at a wet time, uh, the tram lines on this bottom headland do get pretty, pretty bad. Look at them. Good little kink going on now with my plowing. Kept it straight for a bit, but um, yeah, didn't last for long. So pretty, pretty well through it now. Just got um, well, sort of tram line, sort of 24 meters, a bit less at the bottom. There about 24 meters at the top to get out to the. Out to tram line. So just on this nice soil that I was talking about, you can kind of see up in the top. I don't know whether you can see on the camera, but it's quite red up in that top corner. And then kind of in line with that holly tree that I was talking about, it becomes quite dark. And you can see it's sort of getting out of it a little bit because it does go back to a bit more sort of red stuff over towards the hedge but there's this a funny strip down through there it's really lovely soil so yeah should uh, should be good to uh, get the drill going in the morning so uh, we'll finally get to see uh, see the new tractor in action quite looking forward to putting it to work got a couple of little modifications to do on my GPS unit, um, the uh, open out GPS that I've been using, just get the uh, steering controller located a bit better in the cab, uh, yeah that's not a big job, I'll do that this evening, make sure I'm all ready to go, I'll just have to do a bit of an adjustment with the coulters as well because they're set for quite a shallow drilling depth when I was putting the Orsi grape in which is just over the hedge. A few rooks over here today. We normally, uh, we normally see those about here. Most of the seagulls have gone. Well, uh, the crows actually, maybe crows. I think there is a couple of rooks there. Yeah, I don't know, it's funny. I find it fascinating the sort of differences in soil type in fields. Um, like over in that corner, the top of that field, it's very red and heavy. Same here. Um, yeah, and then nice stuff here. So, all finished. Uh, Follow the headlands. Up there and down there. Uh, somewhere near got that lined up so I can plough it all into the field out to the hedge seagulls down there uh, just knocking a bit of soil off the uh, mole boards Give a gentle tap I want to take that home and get a drop on the road quite like to keep the soil in the field it also gives me a bit of a chance to see you Anything's fallen off. That end of that mold board's been off for a while. See uh, how she put a hard facing still on there, but where it really wears off is on this edge and there. So most of that has gone. Let's have a think whether I'm going to put some more on. Uh, might be worth doing that a lot of time. And to uh, compare it and see how much difference it does make with one that hasn't got any fair comparison otherwise. Yeah, really dark here get kind of opposite the holly tree come field maple come hawthorn bit of holly in there just here and it 
changes and goes in quite a sort of brown. And the soil over there has crumbled really nicely. Up here it's a little bit shinier, a little bit more sort of livery as we say. There we go. So that's a start on cereal cultivation 2021. Uh, and all being well, we'll be making a start on drilling tomorrow morning sometime. So, uh, hope you've enjoyed watching a bit of average plowing. There we go, just as we go past the gateway. That is a ryegrass clover mix. We're going to have a quick look at that. Quite pleased with how this has come. So, these are. <laughs> To, like rate volunteers that got brought up by the cultivator and there's a hell of a lot of them quite a few uh, broad weed broad weed broad leaved weeds in amongst it as well but um there's the clover right us looks pretty good over there a little bit wiggly i didn't have my gps set up properly um so uh yeah, it's all done in a bit of a rush, but there's big rape volunteers all over here. It's amazing. So, yeah, rape before the wheat we just had on here. A few wheat volunteers. There was quite a lot of flat wheat up here. Could have it gone out the, possibly gone out the combine. No, I think it was flat. I think it was flat. But, um, yeah, so I came and put some nitrogen on here a few weeks ago. And I did that with GPS, so I didn't put any tram lines in. You can see the wiggly lines, but the tram lines I put in with the with the first spreader were spot on. But yeah, it's literally plastered with rape volunteers. There we go, Be a bit of forage, forage rape for the sheep. It's come really well on the headland, right grass. It's just taken up the nitrogen and rocketing. So. Uh, yeah, so that's good. Looking well. Right, anyway. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll uh, catch up with you soon. And hopefully I'll be drilling. It'll be a grand reveal of the new tractor, which somebody may or may not have guessed correctly. Um, and if you fancy it, give me a like. And uh, if you want to stay up to date with Jim's farming, subscribe. Thanks for watching.